Hello everyone, today's video is all about the recent announcement by the G7 on their agreement of a global minimum tax. Now, I've done a video on this recently with regards to Joe Biden's proposals to adopt a global minimum tax. But uh, what's actually progressed in this field is that the G7 finance ministers got together in London last week and had an agreement that they would try and push for this global minimum tax. There was an agreement by the G7. Uh, so let's just explore a little bit more about what it is. Essentially, the global minimum tax arrangement that they've come up with has two strands to it, pillar one and pillar two. So pillar one basically says that um, a country will have taxing rights on some of the profits of a multinational based on the sales that that multinational has in their jurisdiction. So, for example, one of the tech giants uh, with millions of customers, or users, customers in the UK who have shifted their profits to an offshore tax jurisdiction so that UK corporation tax is next to nothing. And that's gone on for years. All done via perfectly legitimate means. They're just playing by the rules. This is the whole point of coming up with this because they say that the actual rules are so old and not fit for purpose in today's digital e-commerce world. So anyway, they would say the new pillar one rules would say, look, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're shifting your profits offshore so that the UK has no profits, so that there's no corporation tax, because as everyone knows, you pay corporation tax on profits, they're saying, look, we'll just add up all the profits of the multinational from all the jurisdictions around the world and say, look, this is what their profit, this is what their profits are, never mind how it's split amongst territory, uh, but then we'll give taxing rights amongst all the territories on a proportion based on the sales, on the on the sales in those territories. So if a lot of business is done uh, more in one territory than another, then they will get a bigger uh, taxing rights of those profits. Now, on pillar one, it's subject to a uh, an op a minimum operating margin of ten percent. Now, Amazon currently has an operating margin of about six and a half percent, so they wouldn't be caught under pillar one. However, they would be caught under pillar two. Now, pillar two, the second strand of these global minimum tax proposals, is the actual global minimum tax itself, which they've agreed should be at least 15%. Now, remember Joe Biden's proposals a few months ago were 21%. The G7 finance ministers have agreed at least 15%. So that is the minimum rate that territories around the world should uh charge, uh, should impose corporation tax on these businesses. Now, all sorts of politics in this, because these seven members, the G7, US, uh, US and France and Germany, Italy and UK, they already have corporation tax rates in excess of 15%. So it's easy for those seven members to say, oh, we want everyone else to fall into line. But politically, how likely is that to happen? How much sway will the G7 have on the rest of the world? There's 200 plus countries in the world, including a lot of tax havens. Just because the G7 said we should have this, what is the likelihood that it's actually going to get implemented? Already there's been a backlash. Poland and Hungary, um, two Central European countries within the EU, they have low corporation tax rates, 9%, 10%. Ireland, has a, a quite well-known uh, low tax rate of 12.5%, and they wouldn't want this either. The The whole reason that Ireland has 12.5% corporation tax is because in the 90s it decided to uh, charge that low amount to encourage multinationals like Apple to have their headquarters in Dublin, and all of a sudden, over 10, 20 years or more, the Irish economy has absolutely boomed because of the presence of these multinationals. Yes, they're not paying uh, more than 12.5% corporation tax, but they are pumping billions into the economy in Ireland because of all the workforce, the pays you earn, the VAT, everything else. So the Ireland is saying, no, we don't want to increase our minimum rate, 125 Again, Poland 
Hungary saying similar things. So a lot of, it's a political hot potato is this. It's all very well the G7 saying, look, we're going to bring this in. But how likely is it going to happen? How much political clout do they have? So well, we'll soon find out because the G7 um, will try and sell this idea to the G20. The G20 are getting together later on in the summer. And, of course, that includes the likes of India, Russia and China. So will they buy into this idea? We'll wait and see. Uh, like I said, EU already discord amongst Ireland, uh, Hungary, Poland. Now, for any change to EU, there has to be unanimous uh, decision on this. Um, so uh, that's probably very unlikely. So these, this, this uh, proposal for reforming the global corporate tax will could be years away before there's any sort of agreement uh, on this. Um, so in terms of the next steps for the uh, the G7 then, the G7 who came up with this, uh, well, I remember they what they agreed last weekend in London was that the rate should be at least 15%, not just 15, at least 15. A lot of people are calling for it to be higher. Remember, Biden's original plan was 21%. Um, so we'll see if that develops. Um, and also they're exploring this thing called segmentation. Remember I said at the start under pillar one, pillar two, the likes of Amazon wouldn't get caught under pillar one because they have a low operating margin, but they would get caught under pillar two. So what they're looking at doing at the G7 is saying, look, why don't we look at this thing called segmentation, which says, let's, let's, have parts of businesses subject to the tax in their own rights. So in other words, you split up Amazon, not literally, not a demerger, but hypothetically for tax purposes, you say, look, Amazon cloud uh, services, Amazon um, AWS, Amazon web-based services, very profitable compared to selling stuff online. It's got a 30% profit margin. It's just when you combine it with everything else in Amazon, it brings the margin right down to below 10. Hence, it falls out of pillar one. But what if you say, look, we're going to tax division separately. So all the profitable ones like Amazon Web Services at 30%, that would then be caught under pillar one as well as pillar two. Now, people have been trying to crunch the numbers to say, what will this bring in? And they reckon uh, Pillar 1, if it was implemented around the world, would bring in another 15 billion or so, maybe 20 billion. Pillar 2, possibly uh, north of 70 billion. So they reckon the implementation of these new rules, these proposed rules, if they did come in, would raise about an extra $100 billion a year globally. Uh, in terms of the collection, so how would it work? Well, under the, the global minimum tax strand, the Pillar 2, each country would collect the underpaid tax from its own multinationals. So, as an example, let's say you've got a UK multinational, um, which has significant operations in, um, let's say, Singapore, and the rate of tax over there is below, or could be below the minimal threshold that is introduced, it's the UK tax authorities that would charge the multinational the difference. So the, the Singaporean authorities wouldn't, um, wouldn't collect the extra amount. Um, it, would be, it would be the UK tax authorities that would collect the difference uh, from, from its, uh, its businesses that have these off, offshoots overseas. So a lot to be... A lot to be digested, a lot to be thought over, very political, as I said, trying to get unanimous decisions, especially in the EU. And, and, let, and even in the G20, I can't see um, everyone buying in on this, but you just don't know. Let's see where it goes. But that is essentially the thrust of the G7 proposals saying to each territory where multinationals do business that even though on paper they may not be making profits in those countries because of profit shifting uh, and tax is normally all about profits, uh, that country will have some taxing rights based uh, on a formulaic approach based on the sales, the business activities done in that country. And then the second strand is this global minimal tax that every nation uh, should charge uh, 15 and if they don't, then the uh, respective territories of which uh, the companies uh, are headquartered will pick up the 
pick up the difference in tax revenue. So uh, let's just see what happens. Let's follow the the um, the cause. Uh, let's follow the course of this, um, and it'll be interesting to see where they get to with this because for years. There has already been trying to be progress on on international tax agreements for tax, taxing the digital economy. Like I said, the rules are decades old, not really fit for purpose. A lot of it talks about physical presence in jurisdictions. wasn't designed for online virtual business, which a lot of the tech world is now. And um, the, the progress has been slow. Hence, a lot of countries have done unilateral uh, tax. Uh, rules to try and tax the uh, the big tech companies, Britain being one of them, the digital services tax, where they've said, look, we're going to charge a percentage of turnover of the the, uh, the tech firms. What the Americans have said is, look, that's got to stop. If we once we get agreement across the board on how we're going to tax multinationals across the world, that unilateral approach by the French and the British to tax U.S. firms has to stop. Um, so that's that's so. Like I said, more. Politics involved, um, but we'll uh, we'll follow the debate and see where it goes. And I will obviously keep you all posted. So if you like this video, please do subscribe right there and I will see you soon.